really what that study is talking about is destabilizing this big area of West Antarctica more. And the area of West Antarctica, as you probably know, is sort of, that's your map of Antarctica. Everybody's got one. Um, almost everybody's got one. There's a nice uh, area there that is changing rapidly and is susceptible to some um, ocean circulation changes. We're already seeing that effect going on. Uh, the new study basically says that there are a couple of underappreciated uh, potential effects on the system that could really accelerate how soon we see um, a real retreat, a major retreat in central West Antarctica. One of them is a process we've seen in the peninsula where you get a lot of melt ponds on the surface and they lead to fracturing of the ice and that removes an ice shelf from the front of a large glacier. And when you do that, that ice shelf has been acting as a brace. It usually spreads out and until it touches something like a peninsula or an island or something, and that helps provide a back stress um, to the glacier. Uh, the other thing, the other process that hasn't been appreciated that's fairly important, and we're seeing a few glaciers exhibit this already, um, if you uh, have the, the front of the glacier retreat rapidly, stays grounded, it's resting on the um, geologic bed below, but if the cliff above the waterline extends above about 300 feet, then you get a spontaneous fracturing. The ice is simply not strong enough to hold up a cliff that high. So if you get a rapid retreat of an ice shelf and then a further retreat of the glacier front to the point where you get a 100 meter or 300 foot tall cliff, you get this very rapid uh, um, calving that's um, seen right now in Jakobshaven. There's a 100 meter cliff at the front of Jakobshaven. And if you're gutsy enough, as uh, Richard Alley and his helo pilot were, to fly in front of Jakobshaven, you can actually see these en echelon shears that are showing that the, the front of the uh, cliff face is on the verge of cracking and toppling over as they fly by it. Um, that sort of process happening on some of these glaciers in West Antarctica, which are... Which are um, 10 times as wide as the Jakobshaven system means that we, 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 have, we have a numerically plausible mechanism, physically plausible. Um, uh, we can see it happening at the small scale in other parts of the world. Mechanism for unloading ice at a rate faster than we've ever seen from West Antarctica and indeed fast enough to raise sea level by tens of centimeters possibly as much as a meter if it really gets underway soon uh, before the end of the century. That's a scale of sea level rise that um, hasn't been, it's been talked about, but it hasn't been within reach of realistic numerical models until this paper that just came out. I think they're right, and I think it's a gutsy thing to say because we haven't actually seen this happen at the scale they're talking about, but We've seen enough evidence of this kind of process at smaller scales that means that we got to pay attention to it and that it's got to be in the model. And um, one of the things that's going to be a further evolution of that model is, I mean, in a simplistic sense, you build the cliff that's 100 meters high. In some ways, the physics says um, in your next time step, the next day or the next week, all of this ice fractures completely. Uh, because there's nothing, the, the tension that's being built up by this cliff um, travels at the speed of sound through ice up the rest of the ice sheet. In reality, at Jakobshaven, for example, what happens is a huge mass of rubble builds up in front of the ice, some of it even touching the seabed below, and starts to brace that um, ice. But it's still a very unstable and, and, and rapidly evolving system and nobody really knows how it would play out um, in actual fact in front of Antarctica. And I hope we don't get to see it because it really will mean that, that, that we're in for it. There won't be any stopping it, not for thousands of years. And um, we'll be committed to two or three meters of sea level rise, not in one century, but we'll see it, the sea level rise rates increase a lot faster than we've been anticipating so far. So in terms of adaptation, 
we'd have a much bigger challenge on our hands than, uh, than we do right now. Well, you say two or three meters. There's actually a whole lot more than just two or three meters oh, worth of ice there. There's several layers of Antarctica that are susceptible to this. In total, um, yes, it can be five to even 15 meters eventually. That is sort of in the longer term, and you have to say that the ocean keeps warming, the system just keeps um, evolving at this rate. I think once you trigger one of these things, uh, the level of our understanding now is probably good to extrapolate for two or three centuries, but by a millennium, the ocean will have done something different because all of this fresh water has been dumped into it, because the circulation has changed, because the coastline is different uh, than it was before. Um, it's a little risky to say, take it all the way to completion and, and uh, what do we have at that point.